So let's see today's homemade tartar sauce recipe. It's super simple. Now in a bowl, I've taken about half a cup of mayo. So you can go with any mayo, wedge, or you can go with the classic mayo. Next, I'm going to add one chopped onion, which I've, I've chopped really, really fine. So we're going to add that. Next, I'm going to add one teaspoon of pepper powder. One teaspoon of red chili flakes. One teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Next, we're going to add some salt to taste. One tablespoon of finely chopped jalapenos with the rind as well, with about just one teaspoon of rind because it is a little bit sour. One teaspoon of English mustard. Those are all the ingredients we need. And now all you have to do is just mix all of this really well together. And you've got to refrigerate this because it's mostly had chilled with uh, fish fingers or chicken fingers or even as a dip. So you can store this in a nice jar and refrigerate it and have it whenever you uh, want, you know, need to. So I hope you like this short and sweet recipe. I'll catch you in my next video sooner than you think. This is Akshata signing off. Bye. friends and welcome to Akshita's recipes. Today I will be showing you how I make my ginger garlic paste. Now ginger garlic paste is used regularly by us in our curries, in marination and every time to make some ginger garlic paste for the recipe is quite irritating and even time consuming. And sometimes you may be just running out of ginger, running out of garlic but in this way if you make your own ginger garlic paste it is, first of all, you have no preservatives. We're going to be using all natural ingredients which we regularly use in our kitchen. And all of these are either uh, natural preservatives or they're antifungal, antibacterial. And plus you have a nice big jar of homemade fresh ginger garlic paste at your disposal and you can use it anytime for any recipes. Also, I've noticed that the ones which we buy from the store, first of course, they're expensive. And secondly, if you keep it for a very long time, they do change into a dark brownish color. And sometimes, you know, it uh, doesn't really taste that good too. So why take a risk when it's so easy to make your own ginger garlic paste? And as an added bonus, if you watch the video till the end, I will also show you how to chop onions very fine for any recipe. It's very simple. So watch the video till the end. And if you like today's uh, kitchen tip, then don't forget to give this uh, video a big like. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button that you see below this video and become a part of Akshita's recipes family. So let's head on to my kitchen and make this easy ginger garlic paste. So friends, here I have peeled about a cup of garlic. Now I'm going to show you how I peel garlic. So this is like an entire garlic pod. So I've just broken, up to, broken it up into uh, to get the cloves. And uh, just removing all the peel and the center of the pod. And now I'm just going to be using a knife to cut off the tip of the garlic clove because we're not going to use that and then it, the peel just comes off very easily. Now when you're buying garlic also ensure that your garlic is more on the drier side and it's not really wet. Now sometimes you also find some black or brownish kind of uh, garlic. Please discard that. We're not going to use that. We just want some fresh whole good garlic. Keep a little uh, paper bag uh, or a plastic bag at the side so you can just dispose of all the garbage that you're using and uh, 
the other way is also that you can just mash it down onto your cutting board and it comes off very easily too so our garlic in this way i have peeled about a cup of garlic we're going to be using equal quantities of the garlic and the ginger and in this way our garlic is all ready to be used for the paste now for the ginger i've thoroughly washed the ginger under running water that is very important and dried it up with a wet towel with a dry towel and then using the back of my a spoon just scrape off the peel now we're going to use this peel later on when you're making tea i have a recipe for how to make some lovely ginger tea i'll leave a link below so just you you can use the peel you don't need to discard the peel away but for the recipe we're not going to use the peel at all so ensure that you get off all the peel now we're going to use our mixer or blender and we're going to start by grinding the ginger first keep taking a spoon and stirring it in between till you get a nice fine paste then we're going to be adding a little bit of the garlic at a time and again grinding it to a very fine paste so get in all the garlic now we're going to be adding one uh, about a three fourth teaspoon of salt. I'm using Himalayan pink salt. This is a natural preservative, and I'm also be going to use be using turmeric or haldi powder. Now I have the organic one, but you can also use your regular haldi or turmeric because this has got uh, it's like a antifungal or antibacterial. Now we're going to be using. One tablespoon of any cooking oil, which doesn't have a very strong flavor or a very strong aroma, and I've added olive oil. And again, then we're going to blitz it very, very, very fine till it becomes a very fine paste. So in between, just take it out, stir it, and again uh, blend it till you get a very, very fine paste. This is very crucial. And then you can just store this in a clean, dry glass bottle, preferably, which is also airtight. And you can store it in your refrigerator. You don't have to freeze it. You can just store it in your refrigerator and it lasts for as long as six months. So this is your ginger garlic paste ready and you can use it as and when you want for your curries, for your marinades. Now, like I promised you as an added bonus, I'm going to show you how I chop my onions very fine. It's very, very simple. So first you have to wash your onions and peel them and also cut the yellow pot that's there in, in the center. And then just cut them horizontally first and then vertically. Just roughly chop them a little fine as much as you can. I'm using about four small onions and once you have just chopped them up roughly like this all we're going to do now is just take our knife which has to be sharp it really helps and just holding it on down on one side just keep on mincing your onions going in a particular direction start either from left to right or right to left just concentrate on one part and just move your knife in this fashion till everything becomes nicely finely chopped So this is how I chop my onion. Somebody was asking me how I chop my onion so fine. So this is the trick. You just have to move your knife till it is nice and finely cut. And there you have it. Nice big bowl of freshly cut, finely chopped onion ready to use for any recipe. So I hope you enjoyed today's kitchen tips of how to make some ginger garlic paste as well as how to cut onions finely. And uh, I hope you give this video a like. I hope you subscribe to my channel and join the Akshita's Recipes family. Go and explore my channel. I have more than 280 recipes and lots and lots of vlogs where you get to know me better. And I'll catch you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you.
you so much for being here today. So today I'm going to show you a very easy recipe of preparing your own pizza pasta sauce at home. Super delicious and very few ingredients. So let's jump into today's recipe. So friends, let's see how to make this delicious pizza pasta sauce at home, which is super easy. So here I've taken a pot filled with about three cups of water. And here I've got six medium sized tomatoes. I'm just going to add the tomatoes to the water, keeping my flame between medium and high. And we're going to let this boil vigorously. So after about three minutes, the water starts boiling. Let it be on a high flame and let it boil for exactly five minutes. Now, if you take a closer look, you will see that the tomatoes, the peel starts separating like this. That's when you will switch off the heat and let this let the tomatoes remain in the water for another one minute. Now here I've got a bowl filled with cold water to which I've added some ice cubes and now we're going to transfer these tomatoes into this ice bath. Now we're going to let the tomatoes sit in this ice bath for at least 5 minutes. So basically we're just blanching the tomatoes. And now we're just going to let it sit in the cold ice water. And once it's about after 5 minutes we're just going to take off the peel. It comes off so, so easily as you can see. And the tomatoes are also cooked very nicely and evenly. Now I'm just going to cut off the tips of the tomatoes. And I'm going to transfer this to my mixer jar and make it into a very smooth lump free puree. And here our tomato puree is all ready. So now let's make the sauce. So here I've taken a pan to which I'm going to add one tablespoon of olive oil. Now you know that olive oil doesn't need to, does not need to be heated. So immediately I'm going to add 5 cloves of garlic that I've chopped really really fine. We're going to fry the garlic in the oil because we want to flavor the oil with this garlic. And once the garlic is nicely fried and the rawness has gone away, we're going to add this tomato puree. Mix the tomato puree well with the garlic. And now we just have a little bit of seasoning to add. So I'm going to start by adding some salt to taste. And now since the pizza pasta sauce always has a little bit of a sweet kick, we're going to add about one teaspoon of tomato ketchup. Mix that in really well. Now my flame is between medium to high because we want a thick sauce. So let it cook really well. Keep stirring and now we're going to flavor it with some mixed Italian herbs. So about a teaspoon of mixed herbs or as per your what you like it. If you want it stronger then you can go with two teaspoons. And now we're going to add some color to this. So I'm adding one teaspoon of paprika. You can also add Kashmiri red chili powder. We don't want the spiciness. We just want the beautiful red color. So stir all of this really well together. And now all we have to do is cover and cook it for about 5 minutes. And after 5 minutes our sauce is all ready. Let it cool down and then you can transfer it to a bottle and store it in your refrigerator. Look at the colour, isn't it beautiful? So you can use it for your pastas or your pizzas. So let's make some toddy at home. Now here I have one cup of fresh coconut water. So when we break a coconut, the water that we get, we're going to use that. Now I'm going to add this water to a clean glass bottle. So we need about one cup of fresh coconut water. Add half a cup of warm water to a bowl. 
add one teaspoon of sugar to this warm water. It shouldn't be piping hot, it should just be warm. And we're going to stir the sugar in really well. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of dry active yeast. We're not going to stir the yeast, we're going to let it sit for five to eight minutes till it doubles in size and starts to froth a bit like this. Now we're going to add this yeast water to our coconut water. Just give it a nice stir and let it sit for about 10 hours. I'm covering it with a large uh, kerchief and just tying it up on the top with a cloth. And after 10 hours, our toddy is ready. So I use this to make sannas or bowl, goan bowl, or any recipe that calls for toddy. So this is the simplest way you can make toddy at home. recipes thank you so much for joining me today so this dessert which I'm going to be sharing with you is one of my favorites and that is chocoba ice cream without using any fresh cream without using any condensed milk it gets ready really really quickly so watch the video till the end because I will give you tips on how to prepare this recipe if you don't have the ice cream mold or the kulfi mold so on that note let's get started with today's recipe so here I'm going to be heating up a pot. Now to this I'm going to be adding 2 cups of milk. We're going to bring the milk to a gentle boil. And once it comes to a gentle boil, you're going to add 2 tablespoons of milk powder. 2 tablespoons of powdered sugar mix everything in very well next I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla essence again mix the vanilla well into the mixture And here I have one fourth cup of warm milk. It doesn't have to be piping hot, just warm milk. To that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of corn flour. Mix the two together really well. And add that to the mixture. Now we're just going to mix everything well for about half a minute till it starts to thicken. The consistency will change and it will become a little bit of a thicker mixture. So now you put the heat off and now we're going to either you put the fan on or just keep it in a cool place. Don't refrigerate it, just keep it in normal room temperature and just keep stirring it till the mixture cools or comes to room temperature. This is very important. And now I'm just going to pour it into a jar because that will help me. It'll be easier for me to pour it into the kulfi or maker or the ice cream maker. So just pour this into it about three-fourth of the height of the um, mold. This will give you exactly six choco bars. And now I'm just going to put some plastic wrap on it because when we put it in the freezer, we don't want any icicles to form on it. And then I'm just going to take a sharp knife and just make a hole in the center. because we're going to put the ice cream sticks into those holes so with a sharp knife just make a hole so scissors you can even use scissors just to chop a small little bit 
and then you're just going to uh, put these ice cream sticks. Now, ice cream sticks are available in general stores, and they even have them on station in stationery stores. So just put those in. And now we have to put this in the refrigerator for at least 10 hours. This is very important for it to set completely. So don't be in a hurry. Put it in your freezer for 10 hours. Now after 10 hours, I'm just going to melt some uh, dark chocolate. You can even use milk chocolate. So 200 grams of it, to which I added just 2 tablespoons of butter. And I put it into a glass. And now you can see that everything is set really well. And then we're just going to take this out from the kulfi maker like this and we're just going to dip it into the ice cream and just hold it up like that and immediately it sets and then you're going to just place it on a plate and put them in the freezer again so do one at a time otherwise it starts to melt very easily and that's it guys your choco bar is ready do the same with all the rest of it and enjoy just waiting to try your hands on making the chocoba. Okay, now if you don't get your hands on these kulfi molds or these ice cream molds, I'll tell you what you can do. First of all, uh, you know, you get these kulfi molds in most shops, general stores, and you get them at different, different prices also. Like uh, online, it is a little bit pricey, that's what I found. But just a small tip over here, I went to Sarkari Bandar. I don't know whether all the Sarkari Bandars in your area will have it, but I found it at a very reasonable price. I got it at just 99 rupees. So if you can get your hands on it, or you know, you, it's well and good. Otherwise, you can try many other shops. Like if you're going to Bandra, you can try a shop like Cheap Jack. They might have it. Or if you go down Bazaar Road, you might get it over there. But online, let me tell you, it's a little bit pricey. I saw it at 3.99. Whereas other places, you can get it easily. I think even in Dadar, if you go to certain shops, you might get it at a much, uh, you know, a lesser price. So this is for people living in Mumbai. If you all have any, uh, you know, uh, comments where you can help others as to where you live in your area and where you get these quickly stands at what price, you can leave it in the comments. That will really be helpful for other people who are looking for this ice cream uh, in Kulfi. Uh, stand or uh, ice cream stand anyway if you don't get your hands on this it's very simple don't worry what you need to do is just take these oreo biscuit packets okay the smaller ones the 10 rupees ones cut it up very very neatly and then what you do is you know use a glass which is almost the same size as that particular uh, biscuit wrapper keep that wrapper standing very straight pour your uh, you know whatever like liquid we prepared into that then insert your uh, ice cream stick and then do cover the whole thing with foil like I did with mine because you need to put foil or cellophane wrap or anything on it because otherwise when you put it into the freezer the ice crystals will form a layer and it won't really taste very good you'll have a lot of this icy water kind of uh, you know taste in the in the ice cream so this is one tip if you can't get your hands on the uh, you know ice cream maker but do try to get your hands because that will make work much easier. So I hope you like today's recipe and do give it a try guys. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave it a big thumbs up by clicking on the thumbs up icon. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And once you have subscribed, click on the notification bell. Click all. That way whenever I put up a recipe or a video, you get a message for the same. Go and explore my channel. I have more than 800 recipes. And if you go to my home page, Akshita's recipe, you will see playlist. Click on that. You'll get all the different recipes grouped up into different sections. Sections, you can go and click on that so thank you so much for being here take care of yourselves and i'll catch you soon in my next video sooner than you think this is akshita saying bye take care see you